whom you have sent, then he says, Yeshua the Messiah. So unless we acknowledge Yeshua being the only one sent for the purpose of redemption, that's not faith. Verse 4. And I glorify you upon the earth, and the works I have completed, which you have given me to do, I have done. In this passage, this verse, what is Messiah saying? Well, acknowledgement of who God is brings about obedience to the call that God puts upon a person's life. So let me ask you a question. Are you demonstrating that call? Are you doing the works that he has given you to do? Someone might say, well, I don't even know what those works are. Well, that may be the case. Why? Because you have not began to submit to the word of God. You are not doing those works that the commandments order us to do. And it's only when you begin to do those deeds that you are going to be positioned in a location where you can hear from God. And it's only when you're hearing from God, being in that right location, is God going to begin to guide you and direct you what your call is in your life. Until you begin to submit to God's general words, His commandments that He set before all of His people, until you embrace those, you will never be a recipient of God's direction, His guidance, His personal plan for your life. That's what Messiah is trying to say here. So, verse, verse 5. And now you glorify me, Father, from the glory of yourself. He says, which I have had from before the foundation or before the world was, I was with you. So, Messiah is saying in many different ways how before the world was, that he was with his father and he had that same glory and now he's saying basically you know manifest that truth to the disciples they need to know that now here's why he's saying it at this time we've already talked about disciples are going to suffer in the last days and what is going to cause us to be faithful to persevere to the end well, what's going to cause us to go all the way up to the end of the church age is our true belief that everything that Messiah said he received from God his Father. That is, it's truth. And we only need to do one thing, and that's obey and leave the results to him. And I'll tell you something. As you begin to do that, even today, you know what happens? You grow in faith. You mature your knowledge of him and also you begin to experience the faithfulness of god and that brings about a greater ability to walk in obedience to him that's what this whole passage is about us being grown into faithful obedient servants of god where we become consumed and passionate about the things of god his purposes in our life and we're not led astray by the desires of the world. So where are you spiritually? Do you have these same desires that Messiah is trying to impart to disciples? Well, he says in verse, verse uh, uh, 6, he says, um, I have manifested your name to the ones to uh, man, which you, the men that you have given to me out of this world. They are, they were to you, and to me you have given them. And the word, your word, I have kept. Now, why is that so important? Or literally, and your word, they have kept. Now, why is that important? Because it shows a progression. Now, God has given these men, meaning people, men and women, to his son. How? Now, if you think that God just sovereignly has selected a group of people and given them to the Father, that's not the case. This, this giving comes about through the gospel, through someone being convicted of their sins, hearing the message of grace. See, God has provided the means for giving people to His Son. 
That is the means through a salvation experience, through the message of redemption. And that's why, and it's undeniable, look again here, he says, they were to you and to me you have given them. And the word, your word, they have kept. And now they know that all which you have given to me from you it is. Now, he's speaking here about a very important transition that he's going to be making. This, this transfer of something. This transfer of what I would call a kingdom mentality. And it's only when we have received that, that mentality are our lives going to be dramatically changed and transformed into that which becomes exceedingly useful to God whereby God will acknowledge himself in that person. And that's what we're going to see next week as we press on into chapter 16. We're going to see how God, through those who have kept his word, what word is that? Well, it's a reference to the gospel. Keeping his word meaning received his invitation to salvation. And because of that, they know something, and they know the power of God in their life to bring about change. So let me ask you a question. Do you know that power of God? Is he bringing change about in your life? Do you have a mindset that's different, radically different than those that you know around you that you work with, perhaps your neighbors, perhaps sadly even people in your family, that they're pursuing one thing, but you're pursuing something totally different? that your mind is rooted in the promises of God, that you long for them and you know you'll only be the recipients of those promises in the fullest sense when you are in the kingdom. People who are passionate about the establishment of the kingdom, they are those who have matured in their faith.